yeah, like I just as I said, like Becky Lynch with the lemonade shirt. She's 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 had that shirt. It's good marketing. I even like the shirt. I like the the idea behind it. But it's like you guys are getting the run here with all this time on TV when we could be adding time to other people's matches, other women's matches, and we're getting these crappy promos from you and Trish. But you guys have a cage match at the pay per view. So <laughs> hopefully that's the send off of that. <laughs> I mean, hopefully that's. The I mean, honestly, that that match is probably going to be the main event of Payback. Oh it's, God! It's, it's, don't, it's, do it's, don't do that. It better not be here, but that better we're be not, like the opener. We're not, <laughs> we're not getting a Roman match. Seth and Nakamura, their feud literally just kickstarted. Uh, no, the, it should main event. It's the World Championship. Yeah, for it should main event. <laughs> yeah, but I'm just saying, Becky and Trisha. I mean, Becky and Trisha have had the long, enough, have had the longer feud. Enough, enough of the John Laurinaitis booking. Too long. Have. Too long. <laughs> Where we don't have the title on as the main event. No, we can't do that. Can't do that anymore. We're in, we're in different times now. We're in different times now. Apparently um, not, because we're still getting these kind of promos. Uh, <laughs> <so> with that, <laughs> welcome to Ring Takes, episode 29. Of course, I'm joined by Brian and Lewis. Um, this is episode 29, where we're going to be going on about talking about Edge, Edge's potentially final match, um, Raw recap, and all in uh, AEW all in preview here. Um, but first, I wanted to touch base on the passing of Terry Funk, um, I believe at 79 years old. Uh, I got into Terry Funk later on when he was Chainsaw Charlie in WWF and stuff like that. And then you're like, this guy's a hardcore legend and all this other stuff. Mm. And then you learn about that he was actually a technician in the 80s and stuff like that. And basically, they thought he wasn't marketable, basically being a Southern guy. And he had to change his style to become this hardcore extreme wrestler and became a legend and just was wrestling forever. I thought he was wrestling longer. He was on the verge of being like a Ric Flair trying to get matches and stuff like that. Um, I remember one of the matches that he had with Bret Hart, which was supposed to be his retirement match. Um, that was an ECW that Bret Hart went and wrestled him. So um, it's unfortunate that he passed away. He's a living legend, hardcore legend. When you think of hardcore, you think of Cactus Jack, you think of Mick Foley, um, Sabu, RVD, all these other guys, but the originator of all that, the godfather of that, is Terry Funk really just putting it on edge. Um, barbed wire death matches and all that stuff in Japan and all that. Lots of blood and gore, lots of punishment on his body. But um, yeah, passing of Terry Funk. Uh, what do you guys think about Terry Funk and his career and his legacy? <laughs> so I knew I knew of, you know, obviously knew of Terry Funk's uh, legacy of uh, being the uh, hardcore legend. Um, never really like like watched any of his matches, but you know I'm such a historian where it comes when it comes to uh, WWE documentaries and such. So yeah. I remember the the rise and fall of ECW documentary and how Paul Heyman kind of explained how there wouldn't have been an ECW without Terry Funk. How he was like the first like legitimate star that they brought to ECW yep. when, they, when they start when they started out. I mean Daniel, you mentioned um, his um, death, the death matches he did with uh, Mick Foley over in, in Japan. You know those death, those death matches. You know they got introduced into the U.S. because of because of Terry Funk. So and mm -hmm. essentially, you could say that whole hardcore style and essentially came to the U.S. because because essentially of Terry Funk. Um, mm -hmm. I, I remember I do remember Chainsaw Charlie with uh, teaming up with uh, Cactus Jack for uh, WrestleMania <laughs> to go against the New Age Outlaws. I think it was a the, the dumpster match. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So 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 from from that standpoint, I do do remember Terry Funk. Now, from a historical standpoint, I mean, I learned. I mean, through every documentary that I watch that he's featured in, I learned something new. Um, I remember mm -hmm. I remember Dark um, Dark Side of the Ring, um, FMW, the uh, the Japanese um, wrestling promotion that used to run back in the day. Um, I remember the 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 owner of that company talking about Terry Funk, uh, how um, how him and Terry Funk had a feud. Which which led to this um this um uh barbed wire barbed wire electric um cage match not cage match but, but electric but, but electric barbed wire match which had one of the most memorable finishes you know the, the owner is leaving the ring and I guess apparently the ring was gonna expl explode explode that had a timer on it and then because Terry Funk is his mentor he runs into the ring covers him up and then the whole ring explodes with both of them inside kind of telling that story of, of he even though he beat his mentor he still wanted to save his mentor by going back into the mm -hmm. ring. You could definitely see, even based upon that, the impact that Terry Funk Terry Funk had on others. Um, mm -hmm. He was also another guy who you never knew who never knew when he was going to retire. 
Like I think like <laughs> ninety seven, that's is my retirement match. Then in 03, he had a retirement match. Then in 06, he had a retirement match. <laughs> like, and, and you can tell up. He, he loved he loved what he did though. It, and, mm-hmm. he, and the older he the older he got and the more the more broken down he got, he, he still he still would, would, would give the, the most <laughs> the most he could give in all in all of his uh performances. So we're definitely gonna uh definitely gonna miss Terry Funk as uh, wrestling fans. I mean, I seen on Twitter the outpouring of support that he's been getting amongst amongst very various wrestlers and legends. So yeah, we're gonna miss Terry. We're gonna miss Terry Funk. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, <clears throat> same as Brian. I wasn't. I didn't know. I I would see Terry Funk pop up on like WWF and all these other like matches from time to time. I'm like, I know who he is. I'm like, he definitely looks old as hell. But <clears throat> like you said, later on you find out how he was a huge contributor to the. Hardcore style and the death matches. I know that. I don't know if he was involved in that match where um, Mick Foley lost his ear in that barbed wire match. Um, oh, that was big. That yeah, was big. Yeah, was, was that, <laughs> that was that was uh, I'm sure Terry Funk wasn't too far. So um, <laughs> <laughs> they've done some shit to each other. Let's just say that. Yeah, yeah, and I'm sure he definitely had a hand in probably like, creating those types of matches and everything. So. You know, every you know, there's a giant community that loves death matches, you know, and you know, use all these crazy things like the light bulbs, glass, pizza rollers, scissors, all that stuff, you know. All right, pizza rollers, scissors, that's all one person. That's Nick Gage. All right. I, <laughs> I, I, that's not Tommy I, Dreamer. <laughs> I mean, we're talking about death match wrestling now. Yeah, that's all Nick Gage. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, he's real, man. He ain't no gimmick. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, but it's just saying, you know, he's he's like you said, he's the godfather of that style, and you know, that's still going on to this day. So, you know, who knows if we would have had any of that if it wasn't for him. Um, but yeah, I yeah, I don't, I've only seen part, you know, partial matches and stuff like that. But I know he's definitely a hardcore legend, and you know, I respect anybody who you know, put their body on the line for this craft and the sport. Um, so, you know, RIP to the legend. And it's crazy because, I, as I said earlier, like, he had to change his whole style because he was a regular technician, kind of like a Bret Hart, like, just going mm-hmm. through the technician work and, and having excellent matches. And it's just like, oh, you're not marketable. So he was like, how can I change and be different and stand out and try to cash in on this? And it was to basically give his body to the business, like <laughs> be as hardcore as you can be. And it worked for him. It worked for a long time, apparently. And just it's crazy, man. I just remember that switch up of his story and stuff like that. And it's just like he was this clear cut baby face and then just switched into this hardcore legend overnight. And it's just like, how the hell did he even think of that? How the hell did he even come up with that concept? But, um, of course, as always, rest in peace to the legend. Um, Ric Flair was the first to report it and was just like, damn, Ric Flair got the news and. It's just the just the you kind of think of all the people that he's touched. We talked about Cactus Jack and stuff like that, and how he kind of gave that uh, notoriety to Cactus Jack there to be accepted by WCW, WWF because yeah. the death matches that they looked at and saw what Cactus Jack was, Mick Foley was. So um, mm-hmm. definitely tough, definitely tough to see him go. And 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 as Lewis said, as Brian said, rest in peace to the legend. Um, 